Hi everybody, Jean here from Drew True Love Quilts for You. This is part two of, of our quilted armchair caddy, our sewing caddy, that I've given instructions up until about halfway through the tutorial uh, for part one. So if you want to go back and look at part one, if you're just tuning in, it's a little armchair caddy um, that has a little pin cushion, a little scrap bag. I show you how to make this uh, at, at this actual one. It has pockets. It's left-handed or right-handed uh, for remotes. There's little. There's six little pockets on this side. Um, I've shown you what you need, the, the binding. Um, if you haven't seen part one, you're going to be needing a little bit of fiber fill for the pin cushion. I forgot to mention that. But everything is included in part one, all of the requirements and um, the instructions up until this point. So if you're making it, I hope you're enjoying it, folks. And um, thanks for tuning in. This is part two for our quilted arm sewing armchair caddy. Thanks. Bye. So I just wanted to show you how I've stitched my, my ribbon along. My uh, right sides together, most ribbon has no right side. This one actually had, as I said, it came off of a, a pretty package and I just reused it. And I've really just stitched it stitched. So that's there. Now what I want to do is I found my center line where my quilting was. And um, actually what I've done, I wanted to show you how I did this so, we, so you don't have raw edges. I've taken my length of elastic and I've just put that that way. Um, sort of right sides together. There's no right or wrong side. And just along that length of elastic, I'm actually going to be reinforcing this stitching. Just sewing that piece of elastic on. And what we're going to end up... <coughs> oh, excuse me, please. <coughs> what we're going to end up with is um, my elastic ends are on the are on the inside, if you can just bear with me. So I think I'm going to be doing... Um, Perhaps, hopefully my hands, I'll be a bit doing a piece on that line. And then, let's say there. So I want a length about that big. And now what I want going to be doing is, if you can see this, I'm going to be turning it like this. And coming on, here's the center, the next one, and the next one, about every inch or so, how we've, we've quilted it. And I'm just going to be stitching in here. Do you see that? I'm just going to be putting, hopefully my hands aren't in the way, I'm going to be stitching along in the inside. I can just jiggery pokery this about. I can just stitch along on the inside so our our thread holder isn't doesn't have raw edges. So I'm just going to be stitching on this side. Get my ribbon out of the way. Excuse my ugly hands. Oh mate, sorry. I'll just put my I'm, I'm just going to use that as a guide, that stitching line, back, forth. Don't be ma making sure not to catch the other bit. This is just so there's no raw edges. This is on the inside, as it were. You know me. And it does, it's, it's reinforced seam on the back, but you'll never see the back of this, even though the back looks pretty and it's quilted. It's a little bit of stitching back there. Now keeping our thread out of the way. Now what we're wanting to do is just an equal, uh, an equal part. I'm just going to the middle line. Uh, that's about right. The middle line I'm going to be stitching right along there. So we just put it there and then we see our, our, our stitching line here. So now I have created back, back and forth, back and forth. Now I've created two slots for two larger spools of thread. If you want to use smaller thread, if you want three places of to put your threads or three spools of thread. Now I'm going to come along and there's a lot of threads back here. I'll cut all my threads off the back so it's nice. But there we have our two things of thread uh, holding things. I'm getting ready to bind my little quilt here. It's going to be going to be done almost. Um, what we want, what I'm going to be using is this extra wide double fold tape. And in, in my, um, I believe it was my pot holder tutorial. Um, if you're not aware, most probably you are. If you get this extra wide double fold tape, this is the way it looks. You want to notice that one side of the double fold tape is a bit smaller. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a hair smaller. 
along the length of the tape. So there is an actual back side and a front side. What we want to do with our little quilt sandwich here, there's not a lot of batting here, so it's going to be easy to stitch. Starting at one corner. My other ones, I rounded the corners, but actually, oh, I love rounding corners. On this one, I'm just going to make it square and just finish off in the corner. So I'm just going to keep the, the wider side of this tape on the bottom. Just that. That's a little bit wider than this. Now what we're going to do, is starting about an inch from the bottom, we're just going to tuck this sandwich, this quilt sandwich, in right into that fold. You see? We're just tucking that right into that fold and then very carefully, I'll start about half an inch. I don't know how I'm going to finish that, but when I get to it, I'll get to it. I'm just going to come along and I'm just going to stitch right along the edge of this tape and I know because the way it's been manufactured I will be catching the back side of my tape. It's like a miracle. It's so cool. So there you go and look at that. We have a lovely bound edge. So I'm just going to come along very very um, slowly and deliberately and, a, and because it's biased, I can just enclose these pocket edges. And since you've trimmed off your sides, you've trimmed it off nicely, it will just slot right in there. You see, I'm just, I'm just sort of just, just tucking that edge right into the seam, right into the fold over here. This up my fingers. And then I'll just stitch along that fold, that, that curve. Because it's a bind, because it's a on, cut on the bias, on the inner, the convex and the concave curve, it works. Just stitch that right along like that. Just take it slowly, and then come on the outside curve. Just tucking and stitching. You don't have to pull. You just want to just put that right on the. The curve. Oh, I just went off a bit there, but that's okay. And I'm coming around here, and I just want to. I'm, I'm sort of looking about an, uh, an inch ahead of where I'm. I'm working at all times with this tape, if, you, if that if that makes sense. Where I'm going to be going. So I'm going to come right along here, and I'm enclosing these pocket edges. And I know it's being caught. On the back side of my project. Now I'm going to come to the end. Now you know me and mitering corners. I, I don't know how to do this. So let me just see. I'm sure all of you know how to do a better job. I'm just sort of, sort of going to tuck it. I oh, don't know. What the heck? Um, no. If you follow me, well you won't see the back side of it anyway, will you? Just so the front looks nice. <laughs> terrible teacher. Okay, so look, that looks nice. So there, oh look, 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 yeah, look. So it looks sort of like a miter. Oh, flipping heck, I'm going to take my fingers off. Okay, so I just tuck that under there. Look. Ah, that's a little bit. Okay, let me just see. Eh, didn't work out great. Oh, it looks okay. Come on. Yeah, there you go. It's not... Uh, uh, it's all right. It's okay. Yeah. You know, man mitered corners. Oh, if you're new to this, I hate, I hate mitering corners. I curve most everything. And I curved my prototype. I should have curved this. Let me see what it looks like. Let me see what it looks like. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Look. And I'll just do a little stitch down there. Oh, I didn't catch the back. Oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> I gotta go and fix that. Ah, oh, mate. Oh. Going through lots of lots of let me just see over here. Now see I caught all this lot. I caught that lot. Why didn't I catch that? I, I, I didn't I just there's a little bit about an inch I didn't catch. Anyway, I'm gonna finish it up. I'm gonna stitch it. I'm gonna mitre these corners. Ugh, this is the death of me yet. Um yeah, and then I'll I'll show you how we're gonna uh, uh do a few more bits. I finished binding my little quilt here. 
and I'm really quite pleased with it, even though I, I hate mitering corners. They're not all that wonderful, but everywhere it caught, it caught all my binding. I'm real thrilled about that. Um, around the curves. This is a little bit bigger than this one, and I've, I didn't curve my corners, as you can see. Um, but each one will probably be um, however bigger, ha, um, ha, as I was saying in the beginning, your, the arm of your chair might be a smaller one or a big, really great big wide one. So um, this is a, just a general idea. Now we're just going to create the pin cushion here. And what I've done is I've taken my two pieces of five by 10 uh, fabric and I've just kept, I've just put the right side, uh, the wrong sides together actually. And because I just want to make it a little bit thicker. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to take about, a, about half an inch on either side on the top. And I'm going to stitch, fold that back on itself like that. I'm going to stitch about half an inch down uh, about two or three times and and on each side leaving it leaving this opening for my stuffing and this is what we we will we will have to hand stitch this because I've made this really really full oh you're going to need some fiber fill I forgot to tell you that um some fiber fill for in here to make this as th a big as as big as this if you want um so I'm gonna, just going to be doing that now For time's sake, I'm not going to be showing you how I'm going to stuff this. All I've done is I've made this little pocket, this little package here with the ends turned in, and I'm going to stuff that really, really hard with a fiber fill, and then I'm going to hand stitch it along. And what I've done with this is what I have shown you in the, in the beginning. I will have glued on a little bit of Velcro right here, and then I've glued on Velcro to the backing here of my uh, pin cushion, and then just Velcroed that on there. Now, Again, for time's sake, I just want to show you how very quickly I constructed my little scrap bag here. So for our scrap bag, we're using the 10 inch by 18 inch main fabric and lining fabric. And for each one of them, what you want to do is you want to start on the main body of the, the bag fabric. What you want to do is you want to start... To, um, Stitching down one side to the fold. And then and then um, on the bag fabric, what you want to do is you want to do the other side. About half an inch along, securing the top edge down to the fold. Now, the lining fabric, just put that aside, the exact same thing, however, starting at the top, oops, about half an inch, secure the top, and then you're just going to stitch down about three inches and secure that. And then what you want to do is you want to go off of that fabric from that line. We're just making an opening. to pull our lining, to pull our, our bag through. If you followed my um, bag tutorial, you'll see what I'm doing. And I'll just go along. It's not very, uh, we can only do, make, maybe make about a, a three or four inch opening here because, um, and then back down to the bottom. That's just on one side of the lining. You want an opening about four inches because it's not a lot to pull through. So we don't need a really huge opening. Again, you want to come along the, the other side of your bag, the lining. The point is we are going to be wanting to make a big box bottom for this. And this is, I just sort of winged it to make that big, nice scrap bag. So what I've done, what you want to do now on, on each one, is you want to put your hand inside your bag to that point there. Your finger goes right there. And uh, what you do want to do real quick... Uh, I'm just going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to iron the fold, the bottom fold of that. I forgot to do that. You want to iron that fold real good because that fold line will be your, your marking, uh, your guideline. So what you want to do is you want to come in, take your finger right to there, push that seam over, and then you're going to be, mark, you're going to be taking the fold of your fabric, hopefully you, you can see, 
this stitching line here is going to be lined up with that fold. You can feel it and you can see it. The fold and the stitching line. And then you're going to come down. We want a nice wide bottom back. You're going to come down about three inches. And over here, it's really wide. Oh my, oh, just, you believe it. I'm trying to do this fairly quickly so it's not so long. My thread on threaded. So what, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put this fold to that seam, pulling it all out, and then about three inches down to that line, and then about three inches over to here. Just make a nice straight line. We did this, we boxed the bottom of our bags. And this is all we're doing, is we're making this sort of barrel bag. And we're going to do that on all four sides. We're going to be doing it on this side. Pulling this fabric out here, matching that seam up with the fold. Pulling your fabrics out, and then about three inches down from each side, going to be reinforcing this seam right across. And this will make the bag bottom. See what it looks like when we turn it inside out. And there you have a lovely bag. Just like that, that's all we're, we're going to do. I'm just going to have it like that, and then I'll show you. I'll be doing, and then I'll be cutting off these, I'll be cutting those big things off. I'll do the back, the, the front, the, the, the actual bag, and then I'll show you how we attach the lining to the uh, bag. I've sewn my sides together, and I have my, my lining with the opening, and I've turned my bag with the seams to the side, so this is what it's going to look like. It has a bigger opening and a smaller bottom. And I've just attached my little bit of cord on the outside, just about a two inch length maybe, to hold on to a, a, a um, button that we're going to stitch our last thing. So now, this is the right side of our bag. Here's the side seams. Now we've taken our lining and we've take, turned it inside out. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our bag and we're going to put them, the bag inside the lining just like we did our handbag and our other little bags. We're going to match up our side seams, which they should match pretty good. Tuck that cord, tuck that elastic right in there. And then with your free arm, or if you want to, just sort of shove it under your needle. We're going to stitch this top, this top along there, just about a quarter of an inch, a little bit, bit more than a quarter of an inch, and then we're going to pull our bag through and it will be done, and I'll show you when it's done. I've turned my lining inside out in my little bag, and then I've um, stitched up my opening, which you'll be able to do. And there you go, there's my little lined bag. And I actually, when I, I, I um, top stitched it, I kept the lining a little bit outside of the outside of the bag. I quite liked that. And then just top stitched right along. And so there, as I say, you'll have seen the end product. I'll, I'll fix this, I'll Velcro it down, I'll stuff that real, real, real tight and hand stitch it. Ugh, gotta hand stitch something. Hand stitch that, and then I'll stitch a button right about, right about there. So I have a little removable scrap bag. And there you have, I'm, hopefully I did this fairly quickly um, and fairly succinct that you've understood it, our little arm caddy. So I do hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial and that I've made it um, pretty understandable for you. And I, I really appreciate you following along with me. And um, you can make them for whatever size armchair, but we've discussed that. So um, anyway, again, thank you folks for sticking with me and uh, making our little armchair caddy, our sewing caddy. Okay, everybody, bye.